Welcome to today's Manufacturing Engineering Media Webinar. Our topic is Compact Laser Processing Systems, High Performance in Small Packages, sponsored by Trump. Hello, I'm Sarah Webster, Editor-in-Chief at Manufacturing Engineering Media. Before the presentation begins, I'd like to provide some background on what we will be doing today. Our sponsor, Trump, has played a leading role worldwide in the industrial application of the laser, from the first use of welding of watch springs to the latest trends in micro and macro processing. Our presenter, Frank Geyer, is product manager of laser systems at Trump. He has an extensive background in both the automotive and the custom machine building industry. During his career, he has held positions ranging from CAD designer CAD Design Engineer to Director of Product Management, resulting in a broad understanding of a wide range of product and business aspects. During today's presentation, you will be able to ask questions using the Q&A box that appears on the right side of the screen. Frank will answer those questions following his presentation. If time runs out before we can get to all the questions, we will make sure the answers are emailed to you. Also, there will be a few videos played during today's presentation. As often happens with viewing videos over the Internet, the quality of the presentation can be affected by the type of Internet connection you have, the amount of total bandwidth available to you, and the number of people accessing that bandwidth at the time. If you experience difficulty, please let us know via the Q&A app, and we will work with you behind the scenes to get it fixed. And if you have any other questions about any other aspects of manufacturing engineering webinars, please email me at swebster at sme.org. Now, here is Frank Geyer. Good afternoon and welcome to the webinar regarding compact laser systems. This afternoon, I want to guide you through the compact laser systems that are available on the market. First, the definition of what makes a con compact laser systems, the available configurations from two up to five axes, the typical markets, applications cutting in 2 and 3D, as well as welding in 2 and 3D, system features and options, laser sources available, optical arrangements, workpiece handling and presentation, as well as automation options. And towards the end, I would like to introduce the new Trump True Laser Cell 3000, which will be introduced at FabTech in November. Let's get started with the definition of a compact laser system. What makes a compact laser system? The working envelope is usually the main factor for defining a small system. And the compact systems come in a variety of working areas or working envelopes. The typical sizes range from about 200 by 100 by uh, 150 millimeters at the smaller ends to about 800 by 600 by 400 millimeters at the larger end of the small systems. Any combination of uh, those um, dimensions are possible. Systems configuration range typically from simple two axes up to full five axes. Let's get started with the simple configuration of two axes. What does that mean? Typically, there are several options uh, available. Uh, the first is that the part is stationary, the beam is delivered through scanner optics, or the part is stationary and the optics are moved with Y and X axis, or the part is moving on uh, X and Y stages and the optics are fixed. Those systems are usually used for flat sheet 2D processing, both cutting and welding. Next configuration is one more axis, three axis. There we have, again, a variety of options. First is that the part is rotated and the optics are moved with X and Y axis, or the part is fixed and the optics are moved with X, Y, and Z axis. Or the part is moving on an X or Y stage while the optics are moved with Z and Y or uh, X axis. Or the part is moving in X and Y stages and the optics are moved uh, along the Z axis. And the last one is that the part is moving and rotated in X, Y stages with fixed optics. The parts with the asterisks are actually typically uh, enhanced with the addition of another rotary axis. When you go up to four axes, there's even more complexity. Uh, for example, the part is rotated and the optics are moved X, Y, and Z. 
or the part is fixed, optics are moved X, Y, and Z, and the optics also are mounted on a swivel axis. Or the optics are mount, uh, the part is uh, moving on X or Y stage, and the optics are moved with Z and Y or X and have a swivel axis. Part is moving on X and Y stages. Optics are moved in Z and have a swivel axis. Or the part is moving and rotated on X, Y stages, and the optics are on a swivel axis. Last but not least, the configuration of five axes through 3D programming. And there, the uh, two main uh, configurations have the parts rotated, and the optics are moved in X, Y, and Z, and ha also have a swivel axis. Or the part is moving and rotated on X, Y stages with a rotary axis, and the optics are moved uh, in Z and also have a swivel axis. Frame designs. Uh, once we have defined how the, um, the laser beam can uh, be brought to the part, of course, you need the frame of the machine. And there's, uh, again, several variations possible. On the lower end sides, cost-wise and performance-wise, you can go with a welded frame. Uh, usually it's a fairly low-cost uh, solution, uh, but it is sensitive to vibration, either introduced externally or by the dynamics of the axis itself. The next version up is a heavy-duty cast frame. The cost is a little bit higher than a welded frame, but you have a good vibration dampening. Typically, those are used on high-precision smaller systems uh, where you have a C-shaped uh, cast frame with optics mounted and uh, the working area underneath. Once you go to the requirements of higher performance, higher processing speed, high accuracy, you need to go into uh, an area where the uh, frame is no longer out of metal. You're going, for example, into the cast stone frame. There the cost is a little bit higher than the uh, heavy duty cast frame. It has excellent vibration dampening and allows for mounting features to be cast into the structure, making the entire uh, setup very versatile. One uh, higher cost version, uh, also very popular along, amongst uh, higher end systems, is a granite frame. It's a fairly high cost, but it uh, gives you excellent vibration dampening. Access concepts. Of course, um, you have to be able to articulate the parts in the machine uh, to um, make full use of the laser. There are two main concepts there available. The first concept, and very popular amongst uh, usually at a little bit lower cost systems, are stages. What is a stage? A stage is basically a mounting surface, a plate that has a direct drive system underneath it, moving it along one axis back and forth. If you stack two of those uh, on top of each other, perpendicular to each other, you have an XY system. They are usually uh, lower cost, uh, used on lower end systems. However, they offer a high flexibility. Uh, you can uh, choose the stage performance as needed, meaning that you can go for a lower cost version if higher precision is not required, or you can go to a very high precision uh, stage if you need to. You can uh, have a very high speed of the stages, but then you're limited by the workpiece size and mass because you will have to carry it with it. Uh, they are fairly sensitive to contamination with cutting and LMD processes, and as I said before, the low of workpiece mass capacity is the downside of a stage. The other access concept is commonly known as a Cartesian system. There you have a very high accuracy throughout the working envelope. The drives are outside the processing area. In the picture to the lower right, you can see that the optic actually is the lowest part of the entire assembly. You have the main axis above and be, uh, behind uh, the optics, you, which uh, means that you have a high capacity for the workpiece uh, mass because you're not moving the part, you're moving the optics. You have a very high flexibility also of the working area of, uh, for automation of fixtures. And you have a very high speed and accuracy throughout the area regardless of the workpiece size and mass. This is typically used on higher end systems. Typical markets, who actually would be interested in a small uh, laser system? And there is a variety of markets and um, I can cover a couple of those. 
For example, in the medical field, in medical field usually you see cutting, welding, or laser metal de deposition, LMD. Um, the lower left picture actually shows a part that has been cut over the laser. You see a bone reamer. This is a uh, somewhat wicked looking tool. If you have a hip replacement, this will actually open up your bone area to put the replacement in. The openings that you see in the sphere have been cut with a laser. Uh, job shops, prototyping, there you see cutting and welding. A, very, uh, a system with a very high versatility is helpful. Electronic, electrical component welding. Um, the center picture shows seam welding of a pacemaker. There the low heat input of a laser is actually beneficial as it doesn't damage the interior uh, electronics. And you can use the laser cutting for smaller, very fine, very intricate parts. Other markets that are not that obvious due to part size are aerospace, where cutting, welding, drilling, and laser metal deposition are used. The right picture you see is a turbine blade repair, where laser metal deposition is used to repair a damaged uh, turbine blade edge. Uh, this is very commonly used uh, to repair those turbine blades after, for example, a bird strike or a certain amount of hours in service. Automotive, you using cutting and welding. You see in the picture to the right, keyhole welding of a gear wheel. It's uh, very popular amongst uh, powertrain parts. But you can also use it for cutting smaller hot form parts, for example. In the agricultural business, uh, the systems are also used for cutting and welding LMD. LMD, for example, is used to code anything that has to do with cutting and chopping and harvesting systems. Let's go to the applications. Uh, the first application I want to talk about is cutting. And there are usually three segments for cutting. 2D cutting, flat stock, which requires two axes. 2.5D cutting, uh, which is commonly known, known as tube cutting, where you use three to four axes or 3D cutting, which is the full five axis. In 2D cutting, it's, uh, 2D cutting is often used to cut smaller blanks for further, uh, further processing, for bending small brackets, or uh, for example, um, stators for electrical motors where you have very thin materials, very intricate cutting where high precision is required. In 2.5D cutting, is, um, you will cut tubes, either round or multi-sided. That doesn't really matter. Basically, you have the optics move over the part or the part moving under the optics, and then it is rotated as well. If you have the, the tube uh, in a rotary axis and you have the optics with an additional swivel axis, you can also do bevel cuts like you see on the, on the picture to the right. The accuracy of the laser there allows for a very tight fit uh, um, that is very beneficial for welding or brazing. And of course, in 3D, you can cut any geometry that is accessible by the laser uh, uh, cutting optic in 3D. Examples for those are um, for smaller machines, for example, mobile phone housings, brackets, sheet metal components. On the right-hand side, uh, the part, uh, it's a uh, wrist implant um, that is laser cut as well. Um, once you go into cutting 3D, you often uh, find yourself in a situation where you have to cut different thicknesses. Those usually replace, uh, require then different cutting optics due to the focal length requirements. However, advanced systems offer adjustable optics that can be adapted to the part, part thickness without any exchange. On the next uh, slide, you're actually going to see a video of a laser cutting system uh, cutting a 3D part. What you see here is a automotive part. This is a hot form part. This is a boron steel, about 1.8 millimeter thick, uh, thick, that is being cut uh, by a two kilowatt true disc laser. The part will be the same that will be showcased at the FabTech uh, in November in Chicago this year. The amount of cutting that you see is not necessarily the practical cutting. This is just to showcase the ability of the system. Here you see the optics are on an X, Y, and Z axis, have an additional swivel axis while the part is being rotated. 
Uh, this makes it for a full 5-axis configuration. The accuracy and the speed of such a system uh, will allow you to actually have a very highly productive system with a very high output. A system like this can be used uh, from prototype shops up to 3D, uh, three-shift, uh, seven-day production. The accuracy of such a system, of the system that you see in this video here, is uh, a positional repeatability of 15 micron. However, compared to a lot of advertisements that are out there, this is at the tool center point. Let's get there to the next application, welding. Compact laser systems, of course, can be used for welding uh, any component that can be fit within their working envelope. Those can range from very small and sensitive parts like electronics, sensors, or thin walled parts to heavy duty components that require full penetration welds, for example, powertrain components. Welding processes can be done both with the pulsed or CW, continuous wave laser sources. Some systems also offer the optional wire feed function, extending the flexibility and adding further value to the user. The lower end systems often use scanner optics for deep beam delivery. You also see those oftentimes in plastic welding. Advanced systems are usually capable of offering both heat conduction and deep penetration welding, some even without any change in the machine itself. Example for welding, on the left picture you see the seam welding of a mobile foam battery. There the advantages of laser processing with a very low heat input are very beneficial as you're able to hermetically seal the mobile phone battery without damaging the sensitive electronics on the inside. On the right picture, you see uh, a typical example for scanner welding of electrical switches. There you have the speed of the scanner um, allowing you to uh, touch several weld spots within a very short period of time. In the next video, you see a small laser system that is actually doing some welding. What you see here is that uh, one part gets uh, mounted in the fixture, and then you have three inserts that are being added. The laser then moves, the processing head then moves over the seam, tacks each part in place first, and then does a complete seam weld. The tacking is used to keep the part from moving during the weld. to the optics, 
Um, compact laser systems, all laser sources are uh, typically solid state lasers which deliver the beam via a fiber optic cable. And uh, once you deliver through the fiber optic cable, you end up in the cutting or processing head and you're going through the processing optics. And there are several opti optical arrangements available. First, cutting optics, then welding optics, and also laser metal deposition optics. Cutting optic variations, uh, you can have them without distance control, with distance control, fixed focal length, adjustable focal length, fixed uh, spot size, or adjustable spot size. For maximum productivity and flexibility, of course, you would uh, like to have a cutting optic that has distance control so that you can keep a constant distance of the nozzle to the workpiece. And in case you're dealing with uh, several thickness variations, either throughout the process or amongst different parts, then you, uh, you want to have the ability of adjusting the focal length to match the thicknesses so that you have an excellent cutting result. Uh, advanced systems allow uh, the exchange of parameters without the exchange of the optics. On the picture here, you see the cutting head of a compact laser system. Welding optics. Um, the first welding optics I'm showing to you right now is the typical scanner optic. What you see on the left picture side is you see the beam comes uh, through a mirror into the optic. In the optic, you have uh, two more mirrors, one directing the beam in X direction, one in Y direction. Those are usually used in 2D scanner um, operations. In this picture, you see a scanner optic at the top mounted in a small laser system. This system is also additionally equipped with two stages, X and Y. reason for that is that the scanner optic has a certain field of um, processing, and with the ability to move the part uh, in X and Y, you can actually extend the uh, usable field. The other type of welding optics are the direct welding optics. The scanner optics typically have a certain offset, uh, 200 millimeter, 150 millimeter, or even uh, three, 400 millimeter, depending on the optic type. The direct welding optic, however, usually is significantly closer to the part. It also uses a cover gas for welding and has the option of uh, additional wire welding. The scanner optic itself uses no cover gas. Optical arrangements for the welding optics, there are a variety. You have either direct welding optics. This is fixed position. The optic is not adjustable. You have fixed position, but you can preset an angle. You have a swivel axis, a, a manual swivel axis step, for example. You have from, from 0 to 90 degrees in 15 degrees increments. Or you have motorized. Motorized allows you to swivel the optics during process. Adjustable focal length, either manually or with an optics exchange. You have to exchange the uh, uh, um, processing optic for thicker materials, for example. Or um, several systems offer automatic focal adjustments where one optic is able to cut uh, through a variety of thicknesses without uh, the need for change. And lastly, the laser metal deposition optics. Um, just to showcase a little bit better what this actually does, I want to uh, walk you through a video that shows the process of laser metal deposition. What you see here is a compact 5-axis um, laser system that is showcasing the capabilities for laser metal deposition. In the picture, you see an edge repair or edge deposition. And then the second, the second movement that you see is actually fill up of a damaged area that has been machined out, and you rebuild up the, the structure. The part is articulated with a rotary tilt axis as the LMD process prefers to have the processing nozzle as um, vertical as possible. The processing nozzle that you see in this case has three jets, which is commonly used for 3D applications. For fine depositions, you can also use a coax nozzle, which allows a very fine structure buildup.
For those not familiar with the LMD process, LMD process, laser metal deposition, means that you blow a metal powder of your choosing into the focal beam, a focus of the beam, which then melts the material, well, actually does a welding to the substrate. The advantage over, for example, uh, arc welding with wire is that you have a very low heat affected zone. Typically the heat affected zone is in the range between 50 and 100 micron. Let's get to the workpiece handling. We have now seen that the optics can be moved, but um, there's uh, more to that. We also have the working area configuration. And the working area configuration is determined by two main layouts. Uh, either you have stages, as we see in the picture below, and we discussed stages a little bit earlier. When you use stages, you have a defined working plane height and size uh, that allows you to mount uh, a fixture and a part onto it. If you have a Cartesian system, however, where the optic is hanging above the working area and the moving axis are above and behind the working area, you have a little bit more flexibility in the, in the fixture uh, setup and the working area axis. And the following video is going to showcase that a little bit. What you see here is that you have an access not only from the front but also from the side. And underneath the optic you can see that you have a very uh, large variety of positions, for example, for the working table. Automation options. Uh, not everybody has a job shop with a very low volume. Uh, there are customers out there that have high volume requirements. And uh, a typical solution for high volume requirements, uh, to meet the high volume requirements, are rotary tables. Rotary tables are basically a round table that rotates 180 degrees with two stations. One station will be inside the machine with the part that is being processed, while the other station is outside of the machine that allows the operator to load and unload. This has the advantage that the machine does not have to wait for the load and unload process and your overall productivity is significantly higher. Now let's go to a real life example of a compact laser system that showcases several of the features that I presented earlier. This is the brand new Trump True Laser Cell 3000. It is a highly flexible compact laser system that combines both speed and accuracy. You have a variety of choices for laser sources, of machining processes, optical configurations, and the ability to process a large range of materials, which makes the system very uh, versatile and productive and very interesting. In the following slides, I'm going to uh, highlight uh, several features. Additional information, of course, is available of, upon request. The system also will be presented and operational at Fabtech, and there we have a cutting demo running. Actually, what you will see is the part that you saw earlier in the cutting video. Uh, you can visit us at booth S1701 to see the system and a variety of other systems in action. And of course, you will be able to meet me and other specialists to discuss uh, whatever requirements you're looking at. Here's a overview of the, the new system. It shows uh, from the front that you have the axle arrangement and cantilever design, the Cartesian system, as I said before. Uh, you have a um, HMI with a camera monitor below for welding. Uh, you have a high-speed lifting gate. Exhaust unit is integrated. The enclosure, once you go over one kilowatt laser power, is actively monitored. So you have an active uh, laser monitoring safety system in the enclosure itself. Integrated chiller for drives and optics and any customer devices, and of course all the electrical components are in, in the back of the system.
A couple of technical information, technical specs, access travel range, uh, 800 by 600 by 400 millimeters. That is, this is a fairly large working envelope. And with the flexibility of the table, adjusting the table height or even removing that, adding press towers or anything else, this is a true, truly usable uh, working range. Speeds in X, Y, and Z axis, the main travel axis, are 50 meters a minute. Simeon Taylor's speed is 85 meters a minute. The B axis, which is the swivel axis, allows 135 degrees from vertical plus minus. That is a typical industry standard number. And then the C axis, which is the rotary axis that is mounted then on the table, uh, can uh, provide up to 800 RPMs. Accelerations of the main axis are uh, around 1 G, and swivel uh, and rotary axis provide very high accelerations as well. Positional deviation is 15 micron. Keep in mind, this is at the tool center point. This is at the tip, your machining tip, throughout the entire range of mo uh, the machine. This is not single speed of a single, uh, single stage. Of course, the system comes with a variety of lasers. At Trump, we believe that the laser is a tool and you have to uh, choose the right tool for your application. Once we understand what your requirements are, then we can recommend the proper tool for it. The system can be equipped with solid state lasers up to eight kilowatts, and you can have pulse lasers, disc laser, fiber lasers, diode laser, or true micro lasers, which are uh, ultra short pulse lasers. The system, as I presented earlier, comes with a very highly sophisticated frame required by the very high dynamic and the high accuracy. In this case, we're dealing with a complete monolithic body with excellent vibration damping properties, and uh, you have a lot of mounting areas and mounting options for any, anything that you want to put within the working area. You can remove the table, put something else in there. This is already precast, the mounting options are already precast into the frame. Optical arrangements. This system comes with the option of uh, focus line automatic focal position. I mentioned that earlier that if you're dealing with a variety of part thicknesses, you have to be able to adjust the focal length so that you get the proper parameters for the requirement. Uh, what is possible here is that you can adjust the focal position in, within the machine without having to adjust the focal position by exchanging uh, the optics or do a manual adjustment. This has the advantage that uh, together with the technology tables that come with the machine, which is basically a library of parameters uh, by material and material thickness, the system actually chooses the correct focal position automatically. It does not have to be adjusted manually. Another feature that is unique to the system is called Spotline, the automatic adjustment of the focal diameter. Not all processes require a very fine beam. Once you go, go to welding, sometimes you need a very fine beam, sometimes you need a very wide beam. A very fine beam, for example, is commonly used in butt joints. A very wide beam is commonly used, for example, in overlap joints, where the thickness of the weld interface actually is, uh, makes up the strength. This system allows you to change the illustration ratio from almost one to one to almost four to one. With this, you can actually change within the system from cutting to welding. With a wide range of materials and um, you don't have any downtime because you don't have to adjust anything by exchanging components. Again, the automatic adaptation of the focal diameter is done with the selection of the material and material thickness in the technology tables. Those features allow the one cutting head strategy. Typically, if you're dealing with thin sheet material, you have a certain cutting optic. Once you go over an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, you have to go to a longer focal length. With the ability to adjust the focal spot um, on the fly, 
you actually can use one cutting optic for all uh, for all requirements. Again, there you don't you have higher productivity. You don't have any downtime by having to readjust the machine. Another feature that is uh, unique to our systems is called a two-in-one fiber. Um, for different processes, you need different uh, beam diameters, and you need different field of depth. For example, for cutting, you want a very fine di um, beam diameter uh, with a very uh, large field of depth, and for welding, you need a uh, wider beam and with a lower field of depth. This system has the feature of a 201 fiber where you have the inner core with 50 micron and the outer core with 200 micron. This allows you to switch between processes and between spot sizes without any further change, giving uh, the machine a very high versatility. Quick change of processing adapters from cutting to welding or vice versa. Typically, when you go from one process to the other, you have to exchange the entire processing head. Reason being, cutting, you use high-pressure gas to expel the molten material out of uh, the processing area. For welding, you typically need cover gas uh, to evacuate all the oxygen out of the area. Also, the standoffs are usually different. A cutting uh, optic usually has a, a distance control with a very short distance, nozzle distance to the part. The welding optic typically has a wider, a longer distance to avoid any spatter going back onto the optics. In this case, the optics are all contained within the machine, and the only thing that you change is the processing adapter, the nozzle practically itself, meaning that you don't have to have several complete optics in stock, and the exchange is done rather quickly. Accessibility from all sides, like we saw in that short video clip, you can access the system interior from the front or from the side. With this, you can have a very high flexibility of loading and unloading the part. For example, if you uh, switch from manual loading to robot loading, you can load through the front or through the side. Or if you uh, want to have an integration into production lines, you want to have a transfer line running through the system, the frame design allows access from the side as well. And of course, as I mentioned before, the table height is adjustable and the table can be removed uh, completely. So we're now at the end of the presentations. Uh, if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to, call, uh, to ask me. And uh, I invite you to visit us at Fabtech at the booth S1701 to see the new True Laser Cell 3000 and other systems in action. And maybe we can sit together and discuss your requirements. Thank you. Hello, this is Sarah Webster joining you once again. We have received some questions, and it would be nice to get to all of them before our time is up. Um, so I'm going to jump right in here. We have a question from Vincent. Can two different metals be laser welded together, and are there any different metals that cannot be welded together? And he has a special note about addressing stainless in this question. There we would have, I would have to have a little bit more detail, and um, I would like to discuss this with you offline, as this can be a little bit longer process, to see what exactly do you require um, in case of unknown combinations, of course, we also offer that we do trials in our lab in Plymouth, and that way you can see the results yourself and can um, see if this is acceptable or not. Of course, several there are different materials that cannot be welded together, but that is, uh, would go too much in detail right now. Okay, we also have a question from Anand. Is laser cutting for contacts and spring elements competitive with die stamping for high volume production? What are the advantages and disadvantages? The advantages are that you have no deformation of the part. You have no tool wear of the part. The edges are repeatable as you have no tool wear. The edges are not, uh, not susceptible to micro-cracking, 
but ho uh, however, of course, you are not necessarily uh, reaching the same cycle time as a, a dye that can process several times at the same time as we have to follow the contour of the part. Um, another question we have is, does the system have remote diagnostic capabilities? Yes, all Trump systems, uh, either laser or complete systems, have remote diagnostic systems. Actually, typically between 75 and 80 percent of customer calls, service-related calls, can be resolved by uh, service dialing into the system and, uh, and finding out what the issue is. In case a service technician has to be dispatched, the service technician already can have the proper spare parts for them. Uh, we also have a question from Herb Preet. Uh, do you only sell systems or can run or looks like he says, can you run parts as a contract manufacturer? No, we only do sell systems. Um, we have system. We have that question coming up every now and then, especially with our application lab, where we typically have a large variety of our systems running. Uh, we're simply not zones to be running production. So the answer is no. Um, and we have another question. What is the typical metal temperature re in a 2D laser cutting operation? I'm not sure. Um, we can jump to another question. Yeah. What gases are needed for laser welding? That really depends on the materials that you're choosing. Uh, you can use helium. Uh, you can use argon. Um, that really, as I said, depends on the material pairing. If you have a any specific questions on your processes, please contact me offline and I uh, can get you the information. Does Trump offer fixtures? In general, we do not offer fixtures. The uh, reason being is that uh, we build standard machines, standard systems, and uh, to offer fixtures that you can sell at higher volumes is not economical as we do not know our customer requirements. However, we can guide our customers in certain laser-specific aspects that are required for design of fixtures. What kind of training and support does Trump offer for its systems? Trump offers uh, from basic programming operator training up to maintenance training and also offline programming training for the new system as this just enters the market. Those training classes will be available mid to end second quarter next year. This is when the systems then actually would uh, be available for shipment. Uh, Trump offers a full 24-7 service support. Um, you, when you call into the Trump hotline, you will get connected to a service technician. Uh, the service technicians then can be dispatched uh, to whatever location is necessary. Um, we have a quick question from James. Is there a special true top software for this system? Yes, there is. Um, the TrueTops software programming is common across all uh, Trump uh, machine products from the flat sheet side, machine tool side to the 3D systems. He, um, you are able to get the appropriate post processor for the new system, which allows you uh, to use uh, the offline programming system. This system actually offers two different post processors. If the use is mainly for 2D, you can do Two Tops Laser, which is a 2D software including nesting, or you can, uh, for 3D applications, use a Two Top Cell. Um, we have um, our, one of our readers, our audience members, clarified his question. What is the typical temperature rise in the metal in a 2D laser cutting system? I guess we can circle back with him on that yeah. one. Um, we have a question from Marco. Can it be used for all materials in additive manufacturing cleanup of the part? That I would need to have a little bit more specified um, uh, what he wants, what he means with cleanup of the parts. Um, what you can do after laser metal deposition is that you uh, reheat the surface and you smooth out the surface that is possible to a certain degree. However, that is very process specific, uh, so that would have to be looked on on a case-by-case -case basis. 
Uh, we have a question from Vincenzo. Um, how can I get a smooth edge condition when using a laser to cut stainless? Um, once you, uh, as long as you know, use high pressure nitrogen cutting, you will get a smooth edge condition. Of course, you need to adjust your processing speed and laser power to your thickness of the material as well. Uh, typically, when you see uh, um, burrs develop on edges, uh, then the operator is trying to cut too fast. He also asked which stainless steel metals are best for laser welding. There's a very large variety of different stainless steel metals. I do not have a table in front of me, but if you get in contact with me, then I can provide you that. Uh, another question from James. Can you control automation within the cell, such as clamps? Yes, you can. Uh, all Trump 5 Exo systems come with a configurable user interface that allows the control of clamps within the system as well as the interaction with uh, sensors like part present sensors. This interface also can be used uh, for external automation like a transfer line or a robot. There it would uh, basically uh, work as a simple uh, I.O. for a handshake between the systems. See here, we have a question about um, the warranty period on your system. The typical system warranty is one year, and the warranty on the laser depends on the laser type, uh, true disc, true diode, and true fiber. Typically, come with a two-year warranty. True micro comes with a one-year warranty. Uh, we have a question about where can I see a system in action, and that, it sounds like Fabtech is probably. The, uh, the, the first system in, in the U.S. will be available at Fabtech. That is a system that after Fabtech, towards the end of January, early February, will be uh, operational in our lab in Plymouth. The system is actually set up for cutting and welding. It comes with a variety of options. Uh, unfortunately, at Fabtech, of course, we can't showcase everything due to the complexity of organizing a show. Um, but you can do cutting and welding, and in our lab we have a variety of laser sources that can be um, connected to the system. Well, we've had a lot of great questions here today. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have left. Um, if you have any unanswered questions, we will be happy to pass them along to Trump, or you can um, visit uh, Frank directly at Fabtech. Um, Frank will also be... Um, He'll be on hand the whole duration of Fabtech, which runs November 18th through 21. In addition to shows such as Fabtech and webinars, SME and Manufacturing Engineering Media offer professional development and networking services in lasers and welding through SME's Industrial Laser Community and Manufacturing Engineering's website, www.mfgengmedia.com. If you'd like to see a replay of today's webinar or other webinars in our series, be sure to check out our website. Thank you for taking part in today's webinar.